Parametric programming is essentially a type of sensitivity analysis where we examine the effect on the optimal solution when the input parameters of a linear program are changed. In this video, we look at how simultaneous changes to the entire right-hand side of the constraints or to all of the coefficients of the objective function affects the optimal solution of the problem. Let's begin by considering changes to the right-hand side B. We redefine the generic linear program to the left by introducing the alpha vector of parameters as well as the theta parameter as seen here. We are now able to change the right-hand side of the constraints by adding any real multiple of the alpha vector using theta. In other words, alpha is fixed, but we are allowed to change theta as part of our sensitivity analysis. In parametric programming, we compute the optimal solution for any desired value of theta, given a fixed alpha vector. As an example, let's look at the following linear program. We choose the following alpha, and the resulting problem looks like this. The optimal tableau of the original problem is the following. The easiest way to handle the new right-hand side is to make a column for theta. Everything in the theta column is a multiple of theta. Using the fundamental insight, we can determine the values in the theta column. First, the theta part of the objective function is calculated, and then the theta part of the right-hand side of the constraints. This gives us an optimal objective value of 32 thirds plus 2 thirds theta. We can now determine the interval of theta for which this is the optimal objective value. The necessary calculations are essentially the same as when determining the allowable range for a single parameter change. In order for the right-hand side of the constraints to be non-negative, the following inequalities must be satisfied meaning that theta must be between minus 4 and 2. If theta was lower than minus 4, the second inequality would not be satisfied. In that case, we would need to perform a dual simplex iteration where the exiting variable would be x2, corresponding to the second row, which would be the row with a negative right-hand side. Notice, however, that there are no negative coefficients in that row under the variable columns. This means that the problem is infeasible i.e. that no solutions exist for theta lower than 4. On the other hand, if we were to increase theta to more than 2, we would need to make a dual simplex iteration with x1 being the exiting variable, corresponding to the third row. Performing that iteration, we get to this tableau. We can immediately tell from the right-hand side of the bottom row of the tableau that theta must be 2 or more for this tableau to be optimal, which is in line with our earlier calculations. Furthermore, we have that this inequality must be satisfied, which in turn means that theta must be more than 2 and less than 3 for this tableau to be optimal and for the objective value to be 12. Going above 3 again leads to infeasibility. We have now checked the optimal solution for every possible value of theta and we can write the following summary. We can also examine the changes to the objective function using parametric programming. In this case, alpha times theta is added to the coefficient of the objective. Let's again consider the simple example. We define alpha as this, and the modified problem looks like this. When dealing with the changes in C, it makes sense to add a designated theta row to the tableau. The row has been updated using the fundamental insight, which means that the theta row is actually the same in the old optimal tableau as in the initial tableau. Nevertheless, we have to bring the tableau to proper Gaussian form. This involves subtracting row 2 from the theta row and adding row 3 twice. Doing that leaves us with this tableau. Let's examine the optimal solutions for positive values of theta only. We start by checking when this tableau is optimal. This is done by looking at row 0 and the theta row. We can then write up the following inequalities which gives us the interval for theta of minus a third to two eleventh. In this interval, the optimal objective value is 32 thirds plus two theta. Since we do not want to examine negative values of theta for this test, we should only check what happens when theta goes beyond two eleventh. When this is the case, we need to make a primal simplex iteration with x4 as the entering variable and x3 as the exiting variable. 
doing that gives us this tableau, which is optimal when theta satisfies these inequalities, i.e. when theta is more than 2 11th. We can now write the complete set of optimal objective values for non-negative values of theta as this. This concludes the analysis.